Hi, on the Towners, I'm Frank Licari. Today, we're exploring a city that's not just hip, it's historic too. Of course, we're talking about the city of Lake Worth, or L-Dub, as the kids like to call it. We'll jump into the city's lively and vibrant art scene. Visit an oceanfront restaurant with picture-perfect views. And check out a historic playhouse that just might be haunted. Are you ready? Let's go on the town in the Palm Beaches. This program is brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information. I would like to get into trouble with you in Lake Worth. Tell me what this town is about. It's about the people and what these people do and how they absolutely do marvelous things, not only in the past, not only in the future, but right now. This city was built by two pioneers who were ex-slaves? That's right. Yeah, absolutely right. Their names were Fanny and Samuel James as early as 1896. Now, that's long before Lake Worth began. Sure. The name that they identified with us was Jewel. From this Lake Avenue was the southern boundary of the Fanny and Samuel James property, and it went all the way down to 12th Avenue South. That's a big plot. And, big. and all the way from the lake, Lake Worth, right. all the way over to Dixie Highway. And they, they sold that land after uh, Samuel James passed away. And so you're standing in the middle of the beginning of the history of Lake Worth. Now, it was named after a gentleman, right? Uh, Mr. Major Worth. Major General William Jenkins Worth. Frank, if you really want to get into your history. I do. You need to start walking. If you keep walking, turn the over and come oh, back over to Lake Avenue and come to the Playhouse. There's the ghost there. Oh. There's the ghost there. The ghost of the Lake Worth Playhouse? Uh, they're at the Lake Worth Playhouse. Oh. There were two brothers. Oh. They're, they were called the Oakley Brothers. They came in 1924. And they built the most important theater in Lake Worth at that time. We had the first $10,000 Wurlitzer organ. Oh. But I'm not going to tell you anymore. No, because I you should need, go there. You need to go there and you need to see the pecky cypresses, yeah. the wrought iron, oh. and the fact that there's no bad seats in that house. Plus, now... Well, there are bad seats if there's a ghost in the house. Well, no, because he's a friendly ghost. Oh, he's friendly. He, okay. likes, he likes good people. Okay. What we do offer is, you know, we'll do four full-scale musicals a season here. And we'll vary the, the genres from, like we just finished Flashdance, like a rock type of musical yep. in the summer. Then we'll try to go traditional, maybe we'll throw a newer one in. So we try to hit each market. Um, same with our plays and our black box uh, theater. Also, we have a big film program here oh. where we show independent films 365 days a year. Um, we also have an outreach program where we go into the local schools, underserved community. This uh, building was built in 1924. Um, it was built by two brothers, the Oakley brothers. They, they were uh, running this uh, facility and they initially opened it as a, a silent movie theater and a vaudeville house. And there was a pipe organ on the stage. That ran for a, a period of time, I think about 1928. The stock market crashed. They went out of business. Um, and it's been various things throughout the years. It sat vacant for a period of time. It was a movie theater. Um, but in 1974, the group known as the Lake Worth Playhouse, they were already performing at City Hall in oh. Lake Worth. So they uh, purchased the building, and we've been here since 1974. Okay, so you, you talked about the Oakley Brothers. So yeah. I yeah, yeah. was told that the place might be haunted, and behind us there's a ghost line <laughs> during the day. So tell me a little bit about the history of the. Well, everybody says that uh, all theaters are haunted in right, a sense. Right, right. Um, so do you ever 
you ever have a play going on where there's an extra character on stage? You're like, <laughs> wait a second, not, we didn't cast that not guy. Not so much that, but no. you know, maybe once in a while you'll hear you'll hear a sound somewhere. Sure. Maybe a light will go on. And, right. You know, yeah, th yeah. those sorts of things. So it never gets in the way of production. No. 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 We doesn't, don't have uh, poltergeist floating down doesn't the. Doesn't uh, ruin our theatrical no, experience. No. 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 Not at all. Um, so the challenges of a historic building are obviously uh, always keep the upkeep, right? Yes. So, um, and if actually, if you look in the beams, if you look at the beams, you'll see the OT with yep. the orange. That's Oak, that was the original Oakley Theater. That's the original. Oh yeah. And to be open this many ways. years, yes. and still running. 66. 66. 66. Wow. But we have a loyal and ever growing fan base here, subscriber base, and just you know people that want to support us and be a part of what we do because we do good work. Right. Above all, we put on really good Great shows. Great shows. Yes. Psst, Helen, there's ghosts everywhere. I know, I know, it's an historic town. Oh. We're old. Okay. Thank you, Frank. If you weren't here, how would I get in without you? Well, uh, it'd be tough, right? Yeah, the number one rule of kayaking is there's no graceful way to get in right. and out of a kayak, so. Right. Okay. All right. There you go. Yeah. Oh, sure. All right. Oh, yeah. Snook Islands is, is kind of the crown jewel of the restoration that Palm Beach County has done in Lake Worth Lagoon. You know, Lake Worth Lagoon, we call it an urban estuary. So about 90% of the edge of the lagoon has been seawalled. Okay. And so what we're trying to do is bring back some of the habitat that was lost by all the development. And Snook Islands is the biggest example of that. Yep. What is a snook? It's a fish. Okay. Yep. Well, I figured, sort of, yep. I guess, but I've heard of salmon, I've heard of bass, I've heard of trout. Yep. You can just uh, add snook to that list of fish just, you've heard of before. I yeah. just did. <laughs> and so, can I eat the snook? If a fair-sized snook accidentally jumped in your kayak right. and you got back to shore with it, Dem's good I eats think it's, is it's, what you're yeah, saying. I think it's all Dem's good, good to go. eats. Yeah. Okay. These oysters are utilitarian. They are uh, nature's filtration system. Um, an adult oyster can filter about 50 gallons of water a day. Whoa. Yeah, so um, we really want as many oysters out here as we can get. Adult oysters will cling on to existing rocks and other oyster shells. Um, they're really sharp, so you have to watch where you step, but they're really great for the water. You don't just get breakfast, you get Indian breakfast. Indian breakfast. Now, what's the difference between an Indian breakfast and the breakfast I'm going to get at Denny's or wherever else? My mom used to serve a leftover curry in the morning with the eggs. Or make some scrambled eggs, some curry spices, right. with leftover bread from the night. So I'm like, okay, let's start. Let's start East Indian. And Eggs Nisa is his mom's dish. Fantastic. She used to make it. And he just told me one day, he's like, she used to make it like this. I said, okay, let me try it. It was a way for you to carve yourself out a little niche in the town to be different. Exactly. And, in, and as a result, you create this amazing menu that everybody loves. And that's exactly. they come here specifically right. for that. Because people demanding in this area, different, different. Sure. I didn't know that people would like that Indian food right. in this area, but they did and they were very supportive on Friday nights yeah. before the breakfast. Not only do they love it, that's all they talk about. Yeah. Everybody that we've spoken exactly. to says, come over here. So what keeps them coming back here? Is it the location? Is it your is it your menu? What's the menu item that goes, everybody goes, oh man, I gotta go see the executive chefs this. What is yeah. it? Uh, there's a few uh, fan favorites that we call them now. We've got the shrimp and grits, people die for, line up for it on Sunday mornings. Um, cheesy brisket dunker. Uh, it's a, again, it's a mouthful. I see but it's what you're doing here. House brisket with fresh bread and au jus and cheese sauce. I mean, you guys do fresh yeah. pastries? Yeah, we have uh, Heather, my pastry chef. Um, she not only has developed a pastry menu for our evening team and for the dinner service, but she's also um, opened up a uh, in-house bakery. You want to learn? I would love to. One, sure. one thing I noticed is that you didn't oh, take any notes. Look at no, listen. <laughs> all up here, baby. All How can you remember this? All though? up here. Just wait. Okay, this. Just wait. This, this just I wait. gotta see. Just wait. Give me a plate. Let me show this. <laughs> Let me show this guy up. So look at my circle. Yeah, we gotta get a raspberry oh, and kind man. of pull all your color on the outside. Yeah. Oh, I know somebody who's jealous right now. This yeah. is a close-up version of the sun. Get your cloud in Dollop there. All up in there. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Good, good. <laughs> if there's anything that I uh, I know how to use. It's a chef's knife, not the executive not knife, not one. Look at this, all right? How about one of these, just because? Because you have them, right? Oh, Nelly, look at this. Bam! <laughs> huh? 
My sun's even bigger. Yeah, we got the sunrise and the sunset. Oh, Not bad. Helen! Oh, oh my gosh! The food in this town is fantastic! I I've had Indian breakfast, I've had pancakes, I made my own dessert! Wow! What? The thing about Lake Worth that I always said is that, you know, when you come to Lake Worth, you fall in love with it. You know, I like to say West Palm Beach or Boca Raton, maybe where fine art is sold. But Lake Worth is where it's created. Look at that. We've got it all. In addition, you know, we're sort of like the, the combination of where Key West meets Greenwich Village. Oh. You've got old Florida families whose daddy planted that avocado tree back in 1919. And you've got every pierced, colored, hair, grommet, ear, everything. Right. And everyone comes together. We appreciate the differences that we have and we cherish our diversity. The pavement beneath my feet may look bare right now, but every year tens of thousands of art lovers converge upon Lake Worth for the world's largest street painting festival. Over 600 artists come here with chalk and paint and turn these streets into magnificent works of art. Let's check in with two guys who know what the hype is all about. How does the chalk art, right, on the ground, outdoors, how does that differ as a medium from, say, painting? It, it, you know, the main thing is the psychological. <laughs> you know, again, knowing that you're going to do it, right. you may not even get it done, you know, because if the skies open up when you're halfway through, you just got to accept it and I was going to say, so, so if it rains, you're, you're done. Over just kind of zen and, yeah. you know, understand it is what it is, you right. know? Where do you, where do you go for your inspiration? Do you go look at me and go, man, I'd really like to <laughs> chalk paint this guy, right? Um, do you ever? It, we we actually do a lot of just kind of goofy, you know, uh, you know, whimsical pop, pop, kind of stuff. pop reference. Uh -huh. you know, so you're just big kids is all you're doing, right? We, you're just kids. We play with chalk. Yeah. This Art Deco building houses one of Palm Beach County's cultural gems. Let's go inside and take a look at what the council has to offer. We have 22 employees at the Cultural Council and five departments that serve artists and educators. We serve musicians, we serve as an art gallery, as a public performance space for concerts and for shows, and we also have a learning and education center. But we also have home to our departments of grants, marketing, development, and, and the other services I just mentioned. Wow, that, so that's a lot to have in one, yeah. one little area here. So, because you're right here on Lake Avenue, We're right? We're right here in Lake Worth, that's yep, right. right. And this is the main boulevard in the city. It's between the beach and US Highway 1. So a lot of people just happen to be out for, for drinks or for lunch and or you snag nice them? time. Do you sit outside no, yourself you know, and they just see hand out that a we have a gorgeous gift shop with handmade items from our artists and they come in and they go shopping or they need a map or they're interested in what is there to do in the area. And all of that really helps us to serve the arts community as a whole, but also to serve visitors to this 39 city destination. Oh, there's so much art in this town. I went to the Cultural Council, I went to the Hatch, I saw artist lofts, I saw chalk guys drawing on the sidewalk. And you saw the museum. Yes! <laughs> wow! Lake Worth is the largest concentration of Art Deco architecture in the Palm Beaches. We have the Art Deco residential, and then we have two fabulous Art Deco arts buildings. We have the Cultural Council, and we have the Lake Worth Playhouse. Art Deco is geometric and fast and speed. Ooh. So we have flat roofs, we have glass block windows, mm -hmm. we have racing stripes or banding stripes, and everything is Egyptian, like, like a zigzag or a lightning bolt. It's in groups of threes, and it might be in South Florida, nautical deco, like a steamship. So you'll have porthole windows. The most important element found in South Florida is the eyebrow. Oh. Eyebrow is a flat linear plane. Look at those babies, <laughs> right? Go ahead. <laughs> the eyebrows are flat linear planes above window to keep the sun out. So Art Deco is a lot of fun. And again, it's masculine. It's oh. from the 30s, 40s, and uh, very modern style. Okay, so I'm looking for flat roofs, geometric shapes, in threes, with eyebrows. I see the three thing happening. That's Excellent. good, right? Uh, I see rounded corners here. Yes, you do. Right? It's very uh, symmetrical in threes here. Uh, I see this person does not uh, pick up their mail often. 
Does that have anything to do with the nothing at all? Well, you lift out, there's three of these rounded corner S, S curves in the pole here. See right oh, here, here. here. yes. Look, 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 here we have sure. one, two, sure. three. Sure, sure. In France, we say, une, deux, trois. Yeah, 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 yeah. Art Deco isn't the only type of unique architecture being preserved in Lake Worth. The city also has the largest concentration of cottages in Florida. In fact, there's over 1,000. Wes tells us why residents are living large in small places. Well, it was really the way the land was laid out. These were 50 foot wide and 25 foot wide lots. And they were near the water and they were part of a package deal for farmland out west. They were trying to sell that land and give these lots away, but these became the more popular lots. Gotcha. And that's what made the city of Lake Worth. About five years ago, we had our centennial, and we decided to form the Cottages of Lake Worth, and we published a 240-page cottage um, book on um, all our cottages, and we featured 60 of them. It's a beautiful book. And you guys said, you know what, let's just put these on the map, let's make sure people know they're here, let's preserve this because that makes our area unique. It was a hidden treasure right in front of our eyes. Right. But there's also a historic board that reviews any changes that go on uh, to these cottages. Oh, really? They're so somebody comes in and goes, hey, yeah. let me tell you about this porch swing you put in. That's not, that's yeah. not cottage-like. Uh, porch swing might be a little too much, but okay. yeah. But uh, no, they, uh, the idea is to make it livable for the modern day age. So when does it, when does it stop being a cottage? Uh, when you get a bigger lot, gotcha. when you're um, maybe a quarter acre, you know, typical ranch okay. development. We had a lot of development in the 50s. But oh. uh, these, uh, these were pre-World War II. Hello! Ah! Oh my gosh, there's so much to do here. I've been strolling up and down the avenue. I even went kayaking. Oh! Don't forget to spend your money! Oh, good here. idea! Good idea! Come back! I will! I will! With 8,000 acres of land, Palm Beach County's park system has lots to do for the entire family. In the Lake Worth area, you'll find John Prince Memorial Park. It's the second oldest county park in Florida. We have a tremendous number of activities and amenities here in John Prince Park. Uh, over 725 acres uh, of property here in central Palm Beach County. We have a dog park, we have a therapeutic recreation complex, we have picnic facilities, campgrounds, we have sports fields, nature trails, just a, a number of things that really could satisfy the, the taste of any resident here in Palm Beach County. One of, one of the early things in planning this park was golf. It's one of the only lighted driving ranges here in Palm Beach County that people can enjoy. If you want to take your golf swing to the next level while catching some fresh ocean air, head down the street to Palm Beach. That's where you'll find the Palm Beach Par 3 Golf Course nestled between the Atlantic Ocean and the Intracoastal Waterway. While you're there, check out Al Fresco, where their golf balls are a hole-in-one. After your belly is full, why not head nearby to the Tideline Resort, where you can spend the day at the spa or sip margaritas by the beach. Not a bad way to spend an afternoon. We're one of the few studios that is what's called an open studio where they can actually come and use all our equipment and rent time and make their art. Throughout the year, we have about uh, between 20 and 30 professional artists that come in here to work with our artists. We do group tours. We have a lot of group tours in the season, obviously. We bring Palm Beach County school kids to actually work one-on-one -on -one with the glass artists. Uh, we bring about five five to seven hundred and fifty each year. This is cool in the pipe, yep. yep. Get in a cool pipe. Push it in. Push it in there. Push it down Push in, it down and then in. lift it when you turn. Oh, okay. So this will get a nice even coat. Gotcha. In the door. And keep it turning. Keep it turning. And that's a heat shield next to you. You'll probably quickly find out that oh, it's, it's nice to stand There's behind no that shield. about it, yeah. And we're gonna roll that out. Right on the table? On the table, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, so that has a little grip to that steel table. Gotcha, We're gotcha. trying to push the glass back off of the pipe where it can be used. Gotcha. How am I doing? Great. Okay. That's why you had the dance music on? Do you ever just sort of sit here with the? Glass uh, I definitely do a little. Do we do a little moving around, yeah. a little dancing. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. What's your What's your go-to dance? What do you? Oh yeah, you know I'm white, so I just bob my head like oh, this. Oh yeah, yeah, the head. <laughs> yeah, sure. You left me alone there, David. Uh, that's a Are lot you, of. Uh, you're doing so well. Doing okay? I, I'm not worried about you. you. Are. 
And we're gonna inflate this up to say a softball size. Okay, so what am I blowing right into it's it? It's like a balloon. You gotta seal your lips to that thing and push air through it. And I'll stand back here and tell you when to stop. So when I do tell you to stop, make sure you keep turning it. Okay, you're almost there. And stop. Excellent job. Oh man. All right, yep. now we have some volume. Yeah, that's what so I like, a little volume in my There mind. went the glass blowing aspect of right. our day. Okay. All right, go ahead and squeeze on that line and I'll turn for you. Okay. St go right where I started it. Okay. Well, there's some real heat coming off that, huh? Oh yeah. Wow. That thing's still over 1500, 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. And stop. Okay. I'm gonna heat it up again. Whoa! We'll get, we're gonna work on that a little bit more. That was a that was a that was a live flame there. There you go. Let me know when I can paddle it. Go for it. Nope. Okay. Now just just like that. Oh, I thought I was I was I was yeah. You you, you fooled me with the paddle. One, One two, two, three. three. We good? Go back to the bench. All right, grab the paddle. Grab the paddle. You know which one that is. Yep. Yeah. And now hit the pipe. Hit the pipe? Yep. Whoop. You, bro you broke it. That was fantastic. How long would it take me to be able to do that solo? To do that solo? Yeah. At least two years. Two years. It's a commitment. It is. We embrace all arts, not just myself, but the mayor and the other commissioners. We know the value in art, and we want to be unique, we want to be Lake Worth unique, and you know, we've done it with some of the arts. Well, you can tell when you walk around the town, it's very artsy, it's, one of the, it's vibrant that way, you know? And you take these uh, areas that maybe needed developing, you give them right over to the arts community, now you're getting an influx of artists from all over the place, not including also the locals, but people coming in from out, out of the area and making Lake Worth their home creating the art right here in the town. Absolutely, and we tried to make sure that the artists, the local artists that needed housing were on the list, but we also um, invited local artists from all around, cities around us, um, out of state, and you see the art that they've created. We have huge events, um, we have a large gay and lesbian community, so we have a large gay pride event. Mm -hmm. We have very diverse communities that come out and create art in all realms. Do you give them ideas for what you want? Sometimes we have ideas, but we go through a process. Some is vetted, some is more grassroots, some is young kids on a cleanup and right. recreating. Uh, we painted the local garbage cans, and um, so it just depends on, on what's going on in the community. One, one people, one village. I, I want to create something that I want to retire. And you know, it's walkable, sustainable, great restaurants, everything you really need in a village. And this one's the what? Roasted red pepper, smoked Gouda cheese. Oh, you're a devil. Oh, you're a devil in a white coat. If you like this one, you gotta come here for it. Nobody else makes it like that. Everybody told me they love my soup, so knock on wood, I've been here for 13 years now making soup. I overheard you earlier saying that sometimes you don't even write the recipes down. You start just this concoction, you I don't make write, the soup. I don't write any recipes. Anything. No, no so recipe. what happens if I come in and I taste this amazing soup and I say, I want this next month? I make it the same. The ones that I make the same, I, that are on my everyday list, right. I make the same. But if, but if it's an inspirational soup, there is no law on how I make it, but that's why I let everybody try them. So you're the Picasso of soups. You make one, and it's like it's never going to be the same. Sample it before you get it. Don't go home and get mad at me. That's, that's it. That's what I tell them. Once in a lifetime, <laughs> and it's gone. Sometimes. Like, I tell them, sometimes I might not like be able to do that Every one soup is like a lost love. You're like, ah. Oh. I'll never have that feeling again. They are all made with love. That's it. That's correct. They and are. so it's a family business. It says two, two chefs. My mom does my desserts. From my, scratch. From scratch. And uh, my sister does a couple of my cold soups. So still a family oriented still family, business. yes. I would say the best sellers are the chocolate cake and the rice pudding. I saw the chocolate cake over there. Yeah. yeah. And then um, I have a bread pudding with caramel sauce. You don't. Yes. You and, stop it. And then I use I put a little bourbon sauce on the side oh, so they don't Oh, saucy. To Look at on. you, a yeah. little bourbon on the side. <laughs> don't you want to clean something? No, 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 no. Who needs clean? <laughs> um, 
That's good. Are you single? <laughs> Are you a single lady? No. You're not? No. Okay. I'm married. Okay. Love the history, love uh, the culture, love the environment, um, and in this city here I get everything I could possibly want. And as a city manager I live in Lake Worth. Right. So um, coming down here and ending up here has been a long journey for me, but it has been the best journey. What do you see as the future of Lake Worth? What do you want to see it happen? I see Lake Worth being one of those unique, incredibly wonderful places that people around the country are saying, we want to be like Lake Worth. We've been very fiercely independent in trying to define our own unique path. And it's, it's got some perils as we go through the process, but I think we're on our way to actually fulfilling that. I like Lake Worth, it's a mighty fun place to be. I like Lake Worth, it'll make you scratch like a dog with flea. Oh. Shiny to bloom down by the beach. It's paradise within your reach. Whether you're checking out historic downtown, paddling around Snook Islands, or enjoying unique cuisine, Lake Worth has the whole family covered. This hip, funky beach town is no stranger to the arts, with its eclectic mix of specialty shops and restaurants and galleries running along Lake and Lucerne Avenues. I'm Frank Licari. We hope you enjoy discovering Lake Worth and that you'll join us the next time we go on the town. Helen! Helen, it's the people! It's the people, Helen! I know, I know, they're the best! This program was brought to you by Discover the Palm Beaches. Visit thepalmbeaches.com for more information.